So first off, expert mode allows you to effectively have almost complete control of your server as it is highly configurable compared to non-expert mode. Expert mode, however, is not user friendly, so do be careful as there's quite a bit of technical jargon to learn. That being said, don't be scared to experiment and have fun. I recommend going to the ARC wiki as they'll have all the information about each setting and where they go in order so you'll be able to excel in this and not make a mistake. Secondly, NoTrader will transfer settings from standard mode into expert mode at server start. So what that means is if you've made any changes since the last time the server started, go ahead and quickly start the server then stop it, and then when you move into expert mode, all those settings will be transferred over. Do keep in mind that if you do return to non-expert mode, that any code that you made in expert mode will not carry over, effectively deleting it. So it is recommended that when you move to expert mode, you stay in expert mode. With that being said though, the first thing you want to do is come to this page here, the settings page. This is the default general page. And when you're here, you'll see this expert mode box. You want to go ahead and tick it, go continue, and then you want to go save the change. Once that is done, you'll notice that engine settings has now been replaced with expert mode. So go ahead and click that, and then that will take us to the section we need to be to configure the in files. So when you're using expert mode, there are only two sections that you need to focus on. The game user scenes.ini and the game ini. You can access these by selecting the drop down menu here. Now the one you will not be using is the engine.ini as that does nothing. It is important to note that if you make any changes to the server, it must be turned off first as well as Nutrado recommends waiting 5 minutes after shutting down your server to add changes and then waiting 5 minutes after saving before restarting the server to prevent any loss of code or malfunction in any way. Now the game user settings.ini is the base setting to your server. It controls the day and night cycle, the max wild dino levels, the server name, password, message of the day, structure pickup time, and so forth. The section of this file that you'll be working with and editing will begin here at line 53 with your session name. From that point, the only other part of this that you will edit is everything under server settings and message of the day, which is here. Now, Something to keep in mind is that you will not be editing anything in these little header brackets. You won't be editing that, nor will you be editing anything up here above the session name. You don't touch that whatsoever because that is basically the core part of the server. And if you break that, then you're entirely screwed. Furthermore, the headers wrapped in the brackets mark the beginning of a new section as well as the end to the previous section. What this means is it matters which header you place your configuration code under, as if it's not in the correct section, it will not work. So for example, if you go to the wiki and then under the game user setting, it will have all its code, right? When you get one of those codes, let's say for example, the difficulty code, the override one, you would get that code and then you would come here and then you would put it under your server settings. That's where that code belongs. It belongs all under server settings. It doesn't belong under message of the day. It doesn't belong above server settings. It belongs under server settings. And if you put it there, then you'll be fine. If you put it anywhere else, it's not going to work. Next off, the game INI is where the more advanced mechanics take place. So for example, this is where you would add non-native dinos, such as adding extinction creatures onto Ragnarok, auto unlock engrams, increasing the individual stack sizes, breeding settings, crafting costs, and so much more. Now you can put these codes anywhere you want, so long as it's under this header here, the script shooter game, as long as it's under there, you can put it anywhere in the file. Now, I preferably like to go to the bottom of the code itself and I also like to then put it in alphabetical order as much as possible. So it's much more easier for me to identify the code that I'm looking for when I need to do a configuration. Now that we've covered those parts, let me give you some tips to make your life a bit easier. First off, if there is any duplication of code, for example, you have two stacking codes of the same item, then you're going to have a bit of a problem. So as you can see here, I have two codes for thatch right now. And one of them, as you can see, stacks to 1,000, and then the other one increases the stack to 600. Now, what happens is when these two are in the same file, it's going to choose the bottom one. So it's going to make my thatch only stack to 600. I'm not going to get the stack of 1,000. 
The only way to fix this is to delete the duplicated code, save the change, and then restart up my server, and then my thatch will stick to a thousand. Secondly, most coding issues occur due to a spelling mistake, or there being a space in the code, or a duplication of the code that we just looked at. Now, in any of these cases, it is important that you take your time to read through the code slowly, make sure there are no spaces, make sure the code is exactly the way it's supposed to be spelled. The wiki has every single string the way it's supposed to be spelled. So look at that, make sure there are no spaces, and you'll be good to go. Thirdly, you can actually go ahead and download all your game any and game user settings. Now, this is great for a few reasons. First of all, touching on the same point that we just covered then, is when you download all your code, you can then open it in Notepad or a free application called Notepad++. And there you'll be able to identify any issues in your code and get it resolved before you upload it. Secondly, have a backup. So let's say you add some code and it ends up destroying your server. It's beyond destroyed. Then what you simply do, turn off the server, load up your backup, save, bam, server's back to normal. No issues whatsoever. And then the last great reason why it's okay that you can download files is that if you hired someone to code your server, you can just send them the configuration file. They do their thing, they send it back and then you just whop it onto your server and then bam, there you go, server is perfect. All right, now the next tip is to learn any of these codes as expert mode is not user friendly by any means possible. Head to the server configuration on the wiki as mentioned earlier for explanation on every single setting as well as where to put them. Now, if you're still stuck, I have a couple of guides already on the Trado settings. I will be doing more, so don't worry. There'll be more coming out. And if you have any issues right now, let me know in the comments. I'm going to do my best to get back to you and help you solve your issue. Any setting that is in the general section that relates to expert mode will override the code. So for example, in expert mode, I have it set where when you shoot someone or hit someone, there will not be the damage text above their head when they get hit. However, in the general section, as you can see, that's enabled. Now, because this is enabled, when I play on my server, people are going to see the floating numbers, which I don't want. So in order to fix this, I simply need to go turn this off, save the change, and then load up my server, and then there won't be any floating damage text. If you're in engine settings instead of expert mode, you can add game RNI features like adding non-native dinos and drops in this black box here. However, you cannot add any features that go in the game user, such as increasing the structure pickup time. This box as well will only accept so much code before it seems to bug out and not really work, as well as it's a lot more easier to manage your code in expert mode compared to this confined box, which basically just throws the code around on your entire mess, and then you're gonna find the issue. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand expert mode, and I wish you all the best with any of your server things. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care.